Today in our 2016 Jeep Compass, we're going to take a look at and also show you how to install the Kurt Custom Fit Class 3 Trailer Hitch Receiver. This offers the 2 inch by 2 inch opening. Its part number is C13081. Here's what our hitch is going to look like installed. As you can see, it's really clean looking. Our main cross tube completely hidden behind our fascia area there. Really simple little area here that we trim out to give it a little bit of clearance. And then you'll see it's going to come out here to our 2 inch by 2 inch receiver tube opening. Nice reinforcement collar around the end here. It's got the flush appearance, which I happen to like. You'll see we're going to be tucked in underneath our bumper just slightly, so we're not going to have to worry about bumping into it or anything like that. Safety chain connection points here are going to be of a rolled steel style. Give us plenty of room to get our chains connected. This is a class 3 hitch, so it's extremely versatile. There's tons of different accessories that can fit in here. Now the hitch is going to offer a 400 pound tongue weight rating, so that's the maximum downward force we can put here at our receiver tube opening. And it gives us a 4,000 pound gross trailer weight rating. That's the total weight of our trailer and anything that we might load up on it. It does not offer a weight distribution rating, so we won't want to use it with weight distribution setups. And with that being said, Kurt will recommend the use of a stabilization strap for anything that would be a non-wheeled load. So anything but a trailer, like a bike rack or a cargo carrier. Now, of course, we do want to check the owner's manual on the Compass. We need to see what it's rated for towing-wise. And we can just go off of whichever of those numbers are the lowest. Now, a couple measurements that are going to be helpful in selecting your ball mount, bike rack, or even hitch cargo carrier will be from the ground to the inside top edge of a receiver tube opening. We've got about 14 and a quarter inches. Then from the center of our hitch pin hole to the outermost edge of our bumper, it's about six. Now to begin our installation, we need to take out a small area of the fascia here just to allow for the shank of the hitch to rest in place there. We need to first mark our center, which is gonna be about seven inches from the outside outside of these rivets it's 14 so if you split that that's about seven and we're going to make our marks here from that center mark we need to go about two and three quarters so we'll be about an inch and three eighths from each side here now we're going to measure up from this rear edge rearward here we need to go two and nine sixteenths, which is just about a sixteenth of an inch past this bend. So we're just gonna use that bend for reference. Cut right along that edge. We can always take out more if we need to. Now we'll kind of mark it out as squarely as we can for it being on a curved surface here. All right, now we'll begin trimming this out. Now we can always take out more, so we'll err on the side of too little first. All right, now we can use a razor blade here. You can also use like a rotary tool to cut this out. It's just a pretty soft material, so it's easy enough to do by hand. All right, now as an option, you can lower down the exhaust. I recommend doing it. It just gives you some extra room to work. You know, use a little strap to give us some support up here in the front. And then we'll remove a couple hangers here in the rear. Now here on the driver's side, it's kind of up on the front corner of the rear exhaust section here. And it's gonna be on the opposite side or closer to the rear here on the passenger side. A little bit of spray lubricant there. Usually makes these pretty easy to pop off, just kind of a pry bar or a big screwdriver in behind them. All right, that should be good. Now it's time to get our hardware pre-positioned. You see we're gonna take the long bolts. We need to place a flat washer on. And then in our frame rail, there are gonna be holes that pass from the outside to the inside. We're gonna place a bolt in each one. You'll see where it comes out here in the inside of the frame rail. Then we're just gonna push them back to where they're sitting even. 
We'll go over and do the same thing for the driver's side. Those attachment points will be in the exact same location. Now we'll grab a 10 millimeter socket. We're gonna just pull this heat shield down temporarily. It's held in place with four fasteners. We can set that aside. Now we're ready to get our hitch lifted up into position. We're going to be kind of careful as we guide it up. You see, once it gets on top of that exhaust, as long as you've got a strap, pretty much supports it for you. We'll watch the EVAP canister down here on the driver's side. All right, there we go. Now once it's in position, we just want to kind of slide those bolts over. And that'll support it for us while we get our flange nut started. Now that we have them started, let's go ahead and snug them down. You may need to hold your flange nut with a 19 millimeter wrench. And we're going to operate the other side with a 19 millimeter socket. Once we have them snugged down, now it's time to grab our torque wrench, look at in our instructions, find the appropriate specifications, and get all four of them torqued down appropriately. All right, now we can get our heat shield put back in. We want to use the part that goes downward over on the driver's side. Just kind of line them up with the bolts there, push it up on, and then resecure it with those nuts. All right, then grab our 10 millimeter again and get those tightened down. Now we'll lift our exhaust up into position and slide those hangers back on. Now these should slide on pretty easily. If they don't, you can always hit them with a little bit more spray lubricant. All right, now we can pull our strap down and ready to start using our vehicle again. That's going to complete our installation of the Kirk Custom Fit Class 3 trailer hitch receiver, part number C13081 on our 2016 Jeep Compass.